All right, we are here in the UK for a special video with none other than Dr. Rangan Chatterjee. So if you remember a couple of years ago, we went to Dr. Jeffrey Bland's conference uh, called Mastering the Implementation of Lifestyle Medicine, uh, put on by PLMI. And it's coming up again at the end of April in Chicago. And one of the keynotes this year is Dr. Chatterjee. And I just wanted to do a little uh, conversation here because... This year's conference is on um, understanding biorhythms, and uh, I just wanted to, to get in with that, you know, to have a conversation with you about to, to help practitioners to understand why it's so important. So, uh, when did you sort of get interested in this this emerging part of medicine? I think it's probably over the last four or five years, if I'm honest. I think before that, yeah, we'd heard the term circadian rhythm, but we hadn't really thought that much about how we apply that to our patients and. You know, I've realized um, in what nearly 18 years of practice now that actually our natural biorhythms, our body's circadian rhythms are really, really important to consider when we're trying to get our patients better. Now, you know, one of the talks I'm going to give at this conference is in relation to my experience on a, um, on a primetime documentary series called Doctor in the House, where I had the opportunity to go and live alongside families with chronic health problems for about four to six weeks. A whole variety of different problems, whether it was type 2 diabetes, panic attacks, fibromyalgia, cluster headaches. And what was interesting, although I saw a lot of people living with a lot of different conditions, when I started applying a lot of basic lifestyle principles, particularly in harmony with the, the, the body's circadian rhythms, I saw all kinds of problems get better. Yeah. Um, when we talk about circadian rhythms, I think the natural one everyone thinks about is, you know, the sleep cycle, you know, so we're not really designed to sleep in the daytime when it's bright. We, as it gets dark, yeah. levels of melatonin go up in our body and it helps us fall asleep. Obviously today, with the way we live our lives, shift work, um, night, night work, all these kind of things are playing havoc with our circadian rhythms. So I really want to talk to the attendees about some tips that you know that the, the science backs up, but also my practical experience shows really, really work. So hopefully help them get their patients a little bit better. Is there anything outside of sleep where this relates to with any of the other like fundamentals of lifestyle medicine? Yeah, absolutely. I think food. Food is something we all talk about. We, we talk about food as medicine. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of great research. A lot of it's coming from the Salk Institute in California, actually, where, where really the, the research is starting to show that of course, what you eat is important, but arguably when you eat might be more important, which wow. is really, really incredible. A bit of a paradigm shift, really, in terms of the way we think about nutrition. Um, so I'm a huge fan, and I'm going to talk about the science behind time-restricted eating, where that science came in, started off with my studies, how that's translated to human studies. And we're now showing that even if you don't change what you eat, if you only change when you eat... You can get improvements in your blood sugar control. You can get improvements in your immune system function. You can even lose weight. So I think that's incredible. There's also, you know, a nice bit of research that, you know, maybe about 30% of us have got a variation, a variance in our, in one of our melatonin genes, which means in the presence of melatonin, we don't really release insulin efficiently. And what does that mean? It means in the dark, when melatonin is high and we should be sleeping, Maybe we don't release a very important hormone, insulin, that helps manage the carbohydrates and many other foods that we eat. So I think this is really shaping and changing the way that we actually try to look after our patients. It's interesting you say that because this is not just a lifestyle medicine conference. This is personalized lifestyle medicine. And it's obvious from that that you know, this is something that you need to be considering in your delivery of personalized medicine, which a lot of the functional medicine, integrated medicine community that we're working with are delivering. Yeah, I mean... As you know, James, you know, the course that I have put together here in the UK, Prescribing Lifestyle Medicine, where we teach doctors the fundamentals of lifestyle medicine, uh, we've created this, this, this deliverable framework of how they can personalize a lifestyle prescription. And for each of the factors, we ask how, what, and when, right? When is very, very important. When are you asking your patient to do this? The workout routine you're asking them to do, when? When is the best time for them to do that? Um, you've got a shift worker who, you know, that by, by nature of what they do, is playing havoc with their circadian rhythm, which puts them at increased risk of lots of different chronic diseases. How can we use the new science on circadian rhythms to help those workers? And that's something I'm really, really passionate about. Awesome. Well, you heard it here first. We hope to see you in April. I'll be there. Dr. Chatty will be there. Dr. Bland will be there. There's a really great lineup of speakers. So if you're interested in learning more about the when of medicine, uh, you should be there too. Looking forward to seeing you then. And uh, we'll see you in Chicago in April.